KBS. She is also the managing editor of the Philippine Journal of Development. And then prior to working at PIDS, she was a staff member of several inter international organizations, including the ERI, the International Center for Living Aquatic Resource Management, Information in the International Institute of Rural Reconstruction. She obtained her PhD in, from the University of Auckland, and she has written papers on e-governance, field migration issues, social remittances, diaspora, and transnationalism. So, uh, Sheila. Um, still on awareness, we, we find 
that um, awareness of asthma increases with age. So those who are um, more than um, 50 years old and, uh, and male reported higher awareness of asthma while younger respondents, regardless of um, sex, um, reported moderate familiarity, okay? Now you may be interested to know uh, the results in other um, ASEAN uh, member states. And um, looking at the results uh, provided by Yaria, um, we can see that also majority of the respondents from other member states um, reported uh, moderate familiarity of the um, accusation. And then if we can combine the, the percentages for somewhat familiar, moderately familiar, and very familiar, we, uh, we can see that um, three um, countries um, stand out. And these are um, uh, the Philippines, um, Indonesia, and Lao PBR. Now, why? So um, the higher percentages of um, um, that we can find in, in the Philippines in, in terms of awareness can be attributed in part to the fact that the respondents, uh, the survey in the Philippines had more 50 plus um, uh, 50 plus respondents. And according to uh, what I said earlier, well, we found that awareness increases with age. Familiarity of the accusation increases with age. But how about in Indonesia? Well, the presence can be uh, attributable to the presence of the ASEAN Secretariat in, in, in uh, Indonesia. And in terms of uh, Lao PPR, uh, if you will recall, um, the, um, the 2016 um, ASEAN Summit was um, held in, uh, in Laos. Laos was the, uh, um, the chair of the ASEAN Summit in 2016, which is also the time of the survey. So the, those are uh, some of the reasons that can um, explain um, the, um, the higher awareness of uh, ASEAN in these countries. Okay? So um, now you may be interest, uh, interested to know the uh, level of student familiarity of ASEAN. Um, and um, as I uh, mentioned earlier, in 2014 and in, in 2007, um, ASEAS, ISEAS, which is based in, in Singapore, conducted a um, study on um, the awareness of students of ASEAN. And as you can see, there, there has been a, um, a significant increase over time. In, in um, 2014, 56% um, of the students um, had, uh, were familiar with ASEAN, and this increased to 87% in, uh, in our present um, study, okay? Now, what you saw are, um, what you saw is the overall, overall data, but how about, um, but how, how do the Philippine students fare in particular in terms of their objective knowledge of the ASEAN? Actually, the 2007 and 2014 surveys of investigated on this aspect. So what they did, what the survey surveys in this uh, years did, was to ask the students to identify um, the ASEAN flag, the year of establishment of ASEAN, of the member of countries comprising the ASEAN and their location in the, uh, in the world map. And uh, however, for 2016, there's, we don't have available data on the objective knowledge of ASEAN among the students because um, uh, the study did not look at those in, uh, at that aspect. Um, so what was the um, result in 2007 and 2014? Well, lamentably in both surveys, the lowest objective knowledge about ASEAN was found among students in the Philippines, followed by uh, those in Singapore. Um, well, for 20, 2016, we can make some inferences. It is possible that there has been a positive change considering um, um, <coughs> better or higher coverage about uh, coverage of the media about ASEAN and also um, more information dissemination activities conducted by government to promote <coughs> the Philippines uh, chairmanship of ASEAN this 2017. Now, um, we also asked the, the respondents whether they identify themselves as ASEAN citizens. So um, as you can see on the slide, majority felt very much that they are ASEAN citizens. Most of them were from academe, government, and even the other school. However, there was an equal number of um, respondents from the business sector who felt either very much or only moderately that they are um, ASEAN uh, citizens. And same with awareness.
is we also saw that um, identification as ASEAN citizens increases with age. So we found that um, the um, younger respondents only felt uh, moderately that they are ASEAN citizens, while older respondents, those uh, 50, especially those uh, uh, who are more than uh, 50 uh, years old, they felt very much they are ASEAN citizens. And this can be attributed to the greater awareness of ASEAN due to uh, um, one's um, um, experience and, and work as one advances in years. Most participants in the next group actually also related that they got to understand what ASEAN is all about through their work. For example, um, we had a participant from uh, the MCO sector, he's a member of the ASEAN Farmers Association, who said that ASEAN is always part of this group's discussion with the Department of Agriculture. Now, um, we also asked um, the respondents what their perceptions are in, in terms of the um, country's, um, in terms of uh, the benefits that the country uh, gets you know, from its membership in ASEAN. And majority of them expressed that the Philippines is benefiting only moderately. Okay? And the largest percentage of those that responded, uh, that responded positively came from academe, and the lowest was from the business sector. So the PIPID response of the business sector is worth investigating because this could mean that um, in the minds of the business sector that um, they are benefiting only uh, little or perhaps moderately from the association. Okay. Now, uh, the FGDs reveal the, um, um, the perception, the insights of the, um, of the uh, participants in terms of the um, actual benefits of ASEAN membership for the Philippines. And if you look at the um, at their um, specific responses, which are flashed on the screen, we can see that the association is um, viewed positively, particularly in terms of the economic aspects or in terms of, of the association's economic importance, particularly in relation to trade, work opportunities, food security, and technology transfer. However, there is also some recognition that ASEAN is important for maintaining peace in the region. And then we also ask the question on whether the Philippines should keep its ASEAN membership. And um, more respondents, regardless of your affiliation, said that um, they, would they would be extremely concerned if the Philippines were to uh, leave ASEAN. And um, we also got the same uh, response during the FGDs. And in the um, flash on the screen are the specific reasons given by the, by the youth in the FGD, which were quite insightful. They said in particular that um, they think living ASEAN um, will weaken the Philippines as, as it will be alone in solving its problems, particularly conflicts and calamities. And they even used the analogy of not having friends if the Philippines is not part of ASEAN. Um, they also stress uh, ASEAN's importance in, in relation to trade. And they also emphasize that the Philippines has poor capacity to create, to create jobs. So being a member of ASEAN, it's important that for the Philippines because um, through ASEAN, it will have uh, access to jobs in other ASEAN countries. Okay. Now, um, to remain relevant, it is important for ASEAN to um, be responsive to the needs of its uh, member uh, countries and to the entire region in, in, in general. So we also investigated the, res the respondents' perception of the present problems confronting the Philippines now and into 2025. Why 2025? Because uh, as, you, as you recall, the timeline for the ASEAN Community Vision is 2025. So using a word cloud, um, let us look at the results. So the size of the word reflects the, uh, the frequency or the number of times a particular word was uh, identified by, uh, by the, by the uh, respondents. So the bigger the word, the higher the, the, the frequency. And as you can see in the slide, um, certain issues overshadow the others. And the top five pressing problems of the Philippines today and until 2025 and identified by the uh, survey respondents are first, internet connection. Um, second is um, poverty. Then we have corruption. Um, fourth is agriculture and food security. And five is uh, energy provision. 
and price. So I encircle them for um, ease of reference. So these issues validate the most common concerns um, <coughs> uh, being faced for our country today. The cost and quality of internet um, services in the Philippines is, is one of the worst, even the worst, as, uh, as discussed by our uh, um, uh, two earlier um, speakers. And if this persists, it has serious ramifications for the growth of our um, IT uh, BPN sector and our uh, services uh, sector as a whole. Corruption in agriculture and food security also top the list of pressing problems that were also mentioned in other member states. You can see the, um, the right hand side that is the uh, um, the summary of the results in other ASEAN member states compiled by area. So this reflect the gravity of corruption and the food security issue in the ASEAN uh, region. So now let us look at the results in, of the focus group discussion. So using a Venn diagram, we can see that most of the um, pressing issues selected by the survey respondents in the Philippines and across the 10 member states of ASEAN also figured in the FGDs. So corruption also emerged in all three FGDs as well as poverty, um, food security and un unemployment were also top concerns. So this confirms that um, in a way we share um, a common set of problems. Okay. Now um, we also asked the participants on their perceptions about the pressing problems of ASEAN today and until um, 2025. So you can see the top um, five there and these are uh, climate change and natural disasters followed by territorial disputes trade then third is trade investment and regulatory adherence fourth is agriculture and uh, food security and inequality also and fifth is corruption so the climate change territorial disputes and trade issues figured in the top five uh, reflect their transnational scope which require um, <coughs> regional cooperation among uh, the member states of ASEAN. In terms of territorial and maritime disputes, the most uh, immediate issue that comes to mind is the um, South China Sea problem. And um, in fact, the participants in the FGD um, immediately, uh, immediately associated the um, uh, territorial disputes to the uh, problems in the South China Sea. On trade investment and um, re regulatory coherence, well, remember that the business sector had the lowest appreciation of the benefits of ASEAN, and that could be related to, to this aspect here. Okay? For instance, a recent paper um, written by Dr. Medalia and uh, Ms. Mandarin um, emphasized the uh, negative um, effects of uh, uh, non-tariff barriers on uh, the Philippines' trade activities with other ASEAN countries. So regarding uh, corruption and, and food security, they also got the, the list of pressing problems in the Philippines and, and other countries, which we saw earlier. Now, in terms of pressing problems of ASEAN today until 20, 2025 that we got from the FGDs, um, as you can see in the Venn diagram, we find that uh, the participants in the FGDs also uh, gave the same set of answers. They also mentioned climate change, um, territorial disputes, inequality, um, trade issues, and again, poverty and corruption. Okay, so in the survey, we also investigated the respondents' expectations, aspirations, and hopes for ASEAN. So what we did was to ask them um, their, about their uh, level of agreement or disagreement with 15 statements depicting particular situations in ASEAN. And these statements uh, particularly refer to um, the economic pillar, okay, the social cultural pillar, and the political pillar. Okay. So here is the result. Okay. So um, for all 15 statements except one, the majority of the respondents agreed that the situations described were likely to happen in uh, 2025. The only exception was on the statement, ASEAN nature cities are less polluted and more livable than they are today, for which there was an equal number of respondents who were both, uh, who were either agreeable or were neutral to that statement. And this 
reflects a pessimism about the quality of life in ASEAN cities, which faces problems of congestion, lack of infrastructure, and rapid urbanization. It is also interesting to note that um, for the statement about good governance and corruption, um, there was also, um, although there were more respondents who were agreeable that this um, statement is achievable by 20, uh, 20, 2025, a good number of respondents were also neutral to it. Okay? So this indicates that they were uncertain that this scenario of um, having good governance and having less corruption by 2025 would be achievable in the future. <coughs> This shows that in the minds of the participants, um, corruption is very hard to er eradicate. In fact, um, a participant in the MPD um, with the youth uh, noted that uh, corruption is inborn. For him, corruption is inborn in the culture of um, ASEAN nations. So using the same set of um, statements, we also look we also asked the respondents what their aspirations and hopes are for ASEAN by 2025. In all 15 statements, they either um, answered um, agree or strongly disagree with more respondents choosing uh, strongly agree. And then um, in the MGDs, uh, we also found that what was common um, across the three groups in, ter in terms of their aspirations and hopes for, for ASEAN is their aspiration for economic growth across ASEAN. And worth mentioning also is the feedback of the business sector, which, if you recall, expressed low appreciation of ASEAN's benefits in the Philippines. Okay, so I'm now I'm down to my last uh, four slides. Okay, we also asked the respondents if they think ASEAN Secretary should upgrade its capacity. And the majority of them answered in the affirmative. However, during the FGDs, we found that they knew very little or none at all about the ASEAN Secretariat. Um, and then we also investigated on what their um, perception is about media coverage on ASEAN. And majority of them said that media coverage in ASEAN is not enough. Um, <coughs> Also, uh, in terms of the use of textbooks to promote ASEAN, they also <coughs> strongly agreed that uh, using textbooks to promote ASEAN is a good idea. The majority of participants in the three FGDs thought that ASEAN's goals, programs, activities should be introduced and taught in school. Um, those from the business sector said that a basic uh, knowledge about ASEAN, basic awareness raising should be uh, done in the primary level, while more advanced uh, Topics such as those that require um, um, international or uh, broader international consciousness, consciousness should be taught in uh, secondary and tertiary schools. And a few participants also um, emphasize the importance of regularly updating the ASEAN content in, in textbooks, noting that some textbooks with ASEAN content are not regularly updated. Now, let me uh, give some, some uh, recommendations, and most of these recommendations uh, pertain on to um, awareness raising on, on ASEAN because as we have uh, uh, found in the study, awareness of ASEAN is only uh, is just moderate. So having more dynamic and targeted uh, communication and out outreach activities, and um, I mentioned there um, some uh, strategies that we can uh, probably adopt. One is increasing the use of traditional channels like uh, television, radio, and free media. Having a radio program dedicated to ASEAN news and current affairs. One example is um, the um, radio station, um, radio program, an online radio program in Malaysia called uh, Durian ASEAN. So this is something that you can uh, um, uh, access online. Then it's also important to partner with the media, radio, TV, and print to increase dissemination of ASEAN-related content. In 2016, actually, more than 200 um, media practitioners from ASEAN member countries attended the ASEAN Editors Summit, and the participants came up with a resolution enhancing media cooperation to promote ASEAN identity awareness and integration. Okay. Um, it's also important to uh, maximize the use of uh, social media to reach young people. Um, other strategies that we can um, use is to by tapping student organizations as channels to educate young people about ASEAN, 
then consider it meet, uh, consider making it mandatory to have the ASEAN flag in schools and uh, government offices. Also, perhaps you should encourage the singing of the um, ASEAN anthem, the ASEAN way. How many of us know the ASEAN anthem? Is there? <laughs> yes, yeah, there is. Oh, the ASEAN yeah. anthem. For us. <laughs> Shall we sing it? Okay, and uh, celebrate the ASEAN day in um, public schools every year, just like the, the UN day. Um, other recommendation, um, in terms of promoting deeper understanding of ASEAN and its programs and activities, Games being enjoyed by the member states and issues affecting the region and how the association is responding. It's important to use uh, our educational system, um, using school textbooks to educate young people. We should continue implementing activities for the youth and encouraging the use of the um, ASEAN uh, curriculum resources. So this is my final slide. It's important that we should promote a more inclusive ASEAN. And what, what we can do is to maximize um, existing platforms for social uh, civil society engagement uh, business sector participation and youth participation. Also develop and implement programs for migrants and entrepreneurs, women, youth, and indigenous peoples in order to increase um, the business sector's appreciation of the benefits of ASEAN uh, um, to our country, okay? especially uh, for uh, uh, migrants, small entrepreneurs, and you know, the, the marginalized sectors. So I will stop here. Thank you very much for the opportunity, and I'd like to um, Acknowledge my co-authors, uh, Dr. Albert and uh, Dr. Liango, <coughs> for uh, collaborating with me on this paper. And thank you very much to all of you. Uh, thank you, Sheila, for that very uh, informative, interesting presentation. I particularly like this slide on identifying as an ASEAN citizen. Mm -hmm. I think if you really want to form a community, this is something that we should aim at, you know, that we identify as a 